I flew into Lima, Peru last night and joined the group for a tour of Lima, Cusco, and Machu Picchu. This morning, the first trip of the day is a visit to downtown Lima. There is a marathon going on in the city right now, so some of the streets are closed. So we have to navigate the city streets to get to downtown. Lima is highly vulnerable to earthquakes, so in the late 1500s, adobe bricks were used in the construction of the ground floors of buildings. Then bamboo wood is used in the upper floors. All the walls are then plastered to make it look like the same material was used all throughout. Somehow, this made the buildings resistant to earthquakes. In the beginning of the 20th century, some areas began to be influenced by Art Nouveau architecture. The ground floors, however, don't look very appealing because they were used for commercial shops. But the upper floors definitely show Art Nouveau. You can see this influence in these buildings we are passing now. The first stop in our downtown tour is this place called Chabuca, named after a very well-known Peruvian singer-composer. There is so much construction going on. The city is trying to get this place recognized by UNESCO as a heritage site. The building walls are peeling off. You can see the plaster have started to crack and peel off, exposing the adobe bricks in the ground floor and the bamboo wood used in the second floors. Here you see the bamboo walls. The walkways are also being paved. We are now entering the Plaza Mayor. This was founded by Pizarro in 1535 and is the main square and urban center of the city of Lima. The centerpiece of this plaza is this magnificent ornamental bronze fountain which dates back to 1650. The plaza is surrounded by buildings from the colonial period which have surprisingly survived the earthquakes of Lima. We continued walking to the historic center. This historic downtown is a designated UNESCO Cultural World Heritage Site. We are now in front of the Central Post Office in Lima, opened in 1897. At the beginning of the 20th century, the building was completely renovated. For the young, it may interest you to know that the people before you communicated through pen and paper called letters. The written document is then placed in an envelope, addressed and sealed with a kiss, and then brought to a building like this called the post office. This excavation was done in 2020, just very recently, where they discovered what is believed to be a water mill. The mill was run by the water coming from the Rimac River. We are now standing on Puente de Pidira, or the Bridge of Stone over the Rimac River. The Rimac River runs through the center of the city. It is one of the few sources of natural water in Lima's mostly desert climate. In the distance, you can see the first leprosarium in Lima, Peru, the San Lazaro Hospital. In the mid-19th century, it was converted into a military hospital. You can also see from the bridge, Lima Shanty Town, where most of the people from all over Peru initially stay until they find better lives. We are now walking along the Alameda Chabuca Granda. I was pleasantly surprised by the modernity of the Alameda Chabuca. According to our local guide, the area is usually packed with street entertainers and snack vendors selling traditional Peruvian foods. These are interesting sets of benches of different shapes. The promenade is anchored by the sculpture of Chabuca Granda, a famous Peruvian singer and composer for whom this area is named. According to our guide, this area is completely safe and is family friendly even until after dark. I am enjoying this tour so far. The only setback with being in a tour group is the lack of time. I would have wanted to stay longer just to relax and distress, 
but unfortunately, we have a schedule to stick to. This is Waka Pukiana, writes Mac in Miraflores. I wasn't expecting an ancient pyramid right in the middle of Miraflores, Lima, Peru. Miraflores is a well-known touristy area in Lima, so this excavation area surprised me. I can just imagine the dust in the city on windy days. There are stray dogs everywhere in Peru, and our tourist guide has already warned us about petting these dogs. Locals let them roam around, and tourists feed them. This ancient pyramid of adobe and clay creates a mystical contrast against the contemporary buildings surrounding it. The juxtaposition is really unreal. The ancient living with the contemporary. Who knew they could coexist? There were several platforms, seven to be exact according to our local guide. The structure is surrounded by a plaza or a central square. The pyramid served as an important ceremonial and administrative center for the advancement of the Lima culture. This society developed between the years of 200 AD and 700 AD. Remains were uncovered belonging to the Wari culture, which was a direct influence on the Lima culture society. The Wari culture was between 500 to 1000 AD. One of the remains was uncovered completely intact in the first tomb within the ceremonial center. This tomb also contained three separate burial shrouds of the remains of three adults and a sacrificed child. It's crazy how this side of the pyramid butts against a city road. And me being flat-footed, wearing boots, I'm afraid I'll just fall into the street. <laughs> This is a reenactment of a typical village life, according to our guide. And according to our guide, during those times, a girl in her second menstruation would already have a child of her own. So she'd probably be around 12 years old. And according to our guide, again, every three years, they'd have a new baby. And this officially ends our tour of Lima, Peru. We will soon head to the airport to catch a flight for Cusco, which is a high altitude city. But we would first have our welcome lunch. This is included in the tour package. We were given the menu last night, so we made our choices already for the lunch today. Note that Lima is a coastal city. So notice the ocean and the paraglider on the side. So for starters, I have the garden salad, which of course I smothered in the dressing. I also had a glass of wine. I was so hungry from all the walking, so the salad did not even last long. For entree, my new friend here had the fish while I chose the uh, beef bourguignon or asado de tira and borgonia. No dessert for me since I'm diabetic, so I just requested uh, cola zero. Please subscribe for the next adventure. Thank you very much.